What is up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my desk editing setup that I've been working on for some time. Actually, my wife and I have been both working on it because she shares the space with me. Also, I'll be sharing with you two editing accessories that has helped my editing workflow slowly get better. This is our dedicated workstation that we call the Nook. My wife and I share this space for editing mainly, but we've added a few new furniture pieces to make content for photos and video. Now, we didn't install the floating desk and shelvings ourselves, so that saved us some money from buying desks. Both of us use BenQ monitors. She is rocking the BenQ EWT780Q, golly, that's a mouthful, 27-inch, uh, and this is the non-USB-C model. Yeah, I made a mistake. I kind of just jumped the gun without looking at all the specs. I just assumed this would be a USB-C model, plus it was on sale on B&H. Yeah, that was my bad but uh we're making it work right now we just have a usb c to hdmi and we'll see how that goes but we might be switching this out a little bit later for her sorry babe as well as she's rocking the 13 inch macbook pro m1 as well for her editing setup for my monitor i'm using the benq sw270c which is a 27 inch monitor as well and is a 2k monitor I got this monitor because of the color space modes it offers. 99% Adobe RGB color space, sRGB, and Rec. 709 for editing video. To the right of my monitor is my MacBook Pro 16 inch N1 Pro. I probably said that backwards. It has 32 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of SSD. Now I am very happy with this model. Editing is real smooth from various projects. The only time it gets bogged down is when I'm having heavy effects or grades in Resolve. But other than that, it's uh, perfectly fine for what I need at the moment. And that is sitting on the human-centric laptop stand. I got it from Amazon, now I'll link it in the description below. To the left of my monitor, I have the 24 terabyte tower from GTEC. Uh, it's called the Speed Tower, I believe. Uh, 7200 RPM hard drives. And I can edit off of this, and I currently am, um, but I do plan to save up for the SSD tower so I can have this split. So this will be like archival storage, and then I'll have performance as well. Now, starting with the Blackmagic Speed Editor, I am a DaVinci Resolve user, and it's been the best move I've made as a filmmaker thus far. Unlike Final Cut Pro and Adobe, Blackmagic makes editing hardware for their software so things like color grading panels uh, editing keyboards and this the speed editor works best in the cut page for fast clip selection trimming and cutting your dailies now this has helped me embrace the cut page and i've actually integrated the cut page into my editing workflow now there are plenty of tutorials out there already, so I'll just link the things that I watched for you to watch as well. I'm not gonna sit here and try to teach you how to use this. I don't have time for that. I purchased this secondhand from one of my followers on Twitter uh, for about a hundred bucks, but on eBay, it does go for a pretty great deals. Uh, I've seen some as low as $200 or below with or without the DR Studio license key that can change the price, of course. But if you buy it brand new from Blackmagic, B&H, or Adorama, you'll be paying around $300 to $400, just so you know. Now, some of the features that I like. One, it is Bluetooth. The only time I need a cable is when I need to charge it. Two, this massive scroll wheel is so much fun to use and it helps with getting through hundreds of clips very quickly and precisely from cuts when trimming like honestly it's it's a nice weighted feel and there's no grinding it's super smooth so you can just kind of run through some clips so sorry clips or just be really fine detail of other clips and just get the right trimming down it's it's a joy like i've just sit there for about an hour going through footage on the cut page trimming 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 deleting what i don't need and it's just moving on to the next thing now the features that i don't like so much 
uh, like I said, is mainly for the cut page. And it does work in an editor page like scrolling and trimming, but not everything translates over to the editor page. Secondly, there's no customizations. You are stuck with the dedicated buttons on this device, which translates perfectly for the cut page. And that's what it was made for. So just so you know, they do make an editor's keyboard, which is for the entirety of DaVinci Resolve. And that's around five or $600. I was gonna go that route, but I found an alternative for the time being. And that is the Logic Keyboard Astra 2 backlit keyboard um, for Mac. And at the time of this recording, I've only used it for about a week and I'm still fumbling over a few things. Yeah, still fumbling, but it's fun so far. But let me, let me tell you more about it. I bought this because one, I needed a keyboard for the setup. Two, I wanted a keyboard that was video editing focused. I got this because I never really took the time to learn all the shortcuts or more shortcuts that can help my editing speed. And that's where the Astra 2 shines. It's jam packed with shortcuts as well as compound shortcuts. Uh, it might look overwhelming when you're starting, but it is color coordinated to access different shortcuts. So you might be staring like me at the keyboard quite a time as you're learning this. So I wouldn't say I'm the fastest. This, this right now didn't help the speed of my editing. It definitely compared to the speed editor for the Blackmagic, that was easy to kind of get up to speed with. But using this, I'm looking down, looking at the keys, seeing what shortcuts are there. And I think over time, obviously, that's going to get faster. So the more you do it, the, the more second nature it will become. Um, so, you know, too, there's two versions, a PC and a Mac version. Really, the only con I have about this keyboard is that one is not Bluetooth or USB-C. What it is, is actually this massive, thick, chunky cable uh, that is USB-A. It's, it's split into two and it's just unwielding. It's not a deal breaker, but it's not the most prettiest setup where you have this massive cable kind of snaking around up into the, the monitor. I hope that uh, Logic Keyboard will make an updated version. A Bluetooth will be preferred, but if it is just USB-C, that's fine too. I could plug it directly into my laptop and just be okay with it. But other than that, I've been super excited for this workspace. Again, I'm working through the friction side of things to, to really dial it in. But other than that, it's getting to where I need to be. And as I'm working with various projects, YouTube videos, documentaries, stuff like that, I can really get a sense of how this is gonna help my workflow or not. So make sure to stay tuned. I will be doing an update later down a few months to see what if I changed anything or updated anything. So yeah, until then, check out the links in the description and I'll see you guys next time. I, I need to have an outro. I don't have a outro. All right, I catch y'all later. Deuces.